Good morning, Brownie. And a fine good morning to you, uh, Tom. Uh, well, in our uh, regular discussions of new uh, uh, new cases, a uh, very interesting one uh, out of the uh, Colorado Supreme Court. You know, we spend most of our time chatting about uh, things that uh, come out of the federal courts, uh, but uh, here's one out of the Colorado Supreme Court, which is a direction to the trial courts to be uh, really active uh, when a question concerning scope of discovery uh, comes up, and obviously concerned about cost-benefit analyses uh, and proportionality, <clears throat> uh, they in Colorado have their analog of the federal rules. Uh, not surprisingly, it's uh, Rule of Civil Procedure 26B2, uh, the proportionality uh, section. And there's also, uh, I think we spoke yesterday, have been a, a recent Southern California decision about uh, what you you like to call a no harm no foul. You have that uh, sign there. Uh, yes, it's uh, uh, Cottle Bank versus Cox Communications, <coughs> uh, a May twenty first two thousand thirteen opinion by Judge uh, Curiel here in the Southern D uh, District, <coughs> where he did an analysis. Uh, it found that the defendant had a culpable state of mind in not uh, preserving, but. Uh, Again, because it uh, turned out upon analysis that it wouldn't have helped the plaintiff's case, uh, no sanctions were in fact levied. So my question is, if the judges are doing things like this under the current rules, um, uh, talking about whether there's really probative value to something that may have uh, not been preserved, uh, uh, chiding the parties or in fact instructing the parties to consider proportionality, why do we need to change the rules? Why do we need well, to change the rules? Uh, you know, in many cases, I, I really do believe uh, that the current rules that the court has are sufficient to, to the day, uh, but the courts have been reluctant to use them. Uh, <clears throat> you know, just as we saw with uh, Judge Grimm uh, in Mancia, where he sort of discovers the extraordinary power inherent in Rule 26G, Right. Uh, uh, and even though Mancia is now uh, several years old, uh, it, it's still remarkable that uh, more federal judges are not using uh, the power that they have under that rule uh, to, uh, to uh, sanction bad behavior. And so that being said, it would seem to me that if, if there's one amendment, amendment, proposed amendment, that would be extremely powerful, it is the changes proposed to Rule 1 to change the wording to include courts and parties, uh, not just that the courts are concerned with the just, speedy, and inexpensive uh, determination of issues, but that the, the parties are. And then changing the committee notes to uh, reflect proportionality. Um, and, and that always struck me as something I hadn't really considered before, which is the power of the notes, that even though it is not the wording of the uh, rule itself that the notes can be given some hefty weight by the uh, by the trial judge uh, in terms of implementation. It would seem yeah. to me that if we're already heading in that direction, mm -hmm. we get an awful lot of mileage about just changing out of just changing rule one. Sure. Uh, well, and uh, also I do think though it would be very salutary to uh, uh, to rein in the scope of discovery <laughs> explicitly uh, to make it uh, relevant and not that amorphous. Uh, ambiguous and certainly a source of tremendous uh, uh, unnecessary cost calculated to lead to the discovery. Uh, yeah, and that's, that's a comment. I remember hearing Bill Kellerman say a year ago at the, uh, at the Executive Council in San Francisco um, that uh, really I'm more concerned with what's probative, not with everything that's potentially relevant uh, yeah. to this proceeding. So, yeah, I, I can see that. Any feedback? Have you heard any feedback yet? I've just been told uh, recently that the official publication of the proposed amendments isn't going to occur until August, uh, I believe, 15th, even though they're out there now and the, the report is, is certainly been widely circulated. You hear yeah, anything? You know, uh, no, I have not. And uh, uh, quite frankly, I've been too busy and, and have not gotten uh, a chance to read the official transcript. I've seen summaries of it, uh, and uh, of course, that's never. Uh, never a satisfactory substitute for reading what they're actually putting out. So well, well maybe uh, we can um, maybe we can do something dangerous, which is both read that over the holiday and then and then 
give the world our take on what the rules can be. Because, you know, they didn't ask us, so. Well, I guess they do, they do ask us when they, when they publish them. We have the, um, the, the ability to comment publicly, and I, I guess there will be even some public hearings. Uh, if when it we'll, mirrors what happened with the first go-round. Yeah. One, 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 one will certainly hope. Well, let's try that recording. Uh,